Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Riddle once again, and the video is what if the largest asteroid hit Earth? And I mentioned this in the videos yesterday, or in one of the videos yesterday, about how I was going to react to this, because it's been popping up in my feed a lot, and the sort of the topic is just something that intrigues me. So, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it, to be honest. We're just going to jump into this, not really much to say. Shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter, links in the description to those. Links in the description for those interested in following. Same for my Patreon, links in the description for those who are interested in that as well, but let's just get into it. How often do you think rocks falling from space land on people? Only one case in history has ever been officially confirmed, although it's others happened. have been reported. On November 30th, 1954, a four kilogram or nine pound meteorite crashed through the ceiling of 34 year old Anne Elizabeth Hodge's home. Oh, God, the stone yeah. bounced off the radio and hit the poor lady in the thigh leaving a huge bruise. The probability of such a small meteorite hitting a person is negligible, but it happened. What if something larger fell to Earth? For example, the largest asteroid in the solar system. Scientists estimate that there are now several hundred million asteroids, one meter or 3.3 feet or more in size in Earth's orbit. Every day, about 100 tons of them in the form of small grains of sand and small stones penetrate the Earth's atmosphere and burn up, leaving a bright trail. About 30 asteroids with a total mass of up to 2,000 tons fly directly towards Earth's atmosphere every year. Occasionally, their fragments fall to Earth's surface in the form of meteorites. More noticeable meteorites, larger than 20 meters or 65.6 .6 feet, fall to Earth no more than twice every 100 years. The last of these came down in the Chelyabinsk region in Russia in 2013. This is the one that's like all over. Is this the one that's like been caught on camera loads? It is, isn't it? I've heard quite a bit about this one. It's quite crazy, the footage is wild. Right? Once every thousand years, objects like the Tunguska meteorite, which was about 75 meters or 246 feet in size, no, reach the Earth's surface. Asteroids measuring more than 100 meters or 328 feet land here even less often, once every few thousand years. The most gigantic asteroids, whose dimensions exceed kilometers or miles, crash down onto our planet once every 100 million years. But in this case, they become the cause of global catastrophes in the extinction of species. One of them probably destroyed the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. If there were no wind, rain, and various geological processes on Earth, our entire planet would be dotted with craters, as can be what? seen on the moon or Mercury. The wait. remaining traces... Is it, wait, I guess because the atmosphere, like he just said. I mean, that makes sense, actually, because I guess the moon gets hit with as many as we do, maybe even less, and that probably gets hit by more. But it just doesn't show on the Earth for obvious reasons. I didn't actually think about that. I did always think why there were so many like, crater marks on the moon, though. So, I mean, that's why the atmosphere of space objects confirm that asteroid impacts are not a fantasy at all. The arrival of luck. I mean, the footsteps of like the first people to step step on the moon are still there, aren't they? So, yeah, I guess it does make sense. Actually. Large stones remains only a matter of time. Scientists consider asteroids at least 140 meters or 460 feet in size as the most dangerous. At the same time, they're mostly located no further than 7.5 million kilometers or 4.6 million miles from the Earth. However, it's very difficult to notice them. After all, they often poorly reflect sunlight, have a flat shape, and fly at a speed of 36,000 kilometers or 22,400 miles per hour. For individual asteroids, the speed can be noticeably higher. Therefore, even the most powerful technology is far from capable of stopping all of them in time. One of the most dangerous candidates will approach Earth in October 2028. Oh 1997 XF-11 could fly past our planet at a distance of 930,000 kilometers or 580,000 miles away. This is so close that you could watch it with ordinary binoculars. 
The size of the asteroid, according to various estimates, ranges from 700 to 1400 meters. That's 2300 to 4600 feet. Scientists claim that it's going to happen. Suppose something goes wrong and it changes its course straight for Earth. The collision speed of such a block with the surface of the Earth would be about 48,000 kilometers or 30,000 miles per hour. This would create an explosion of one million megatons. It's hard to imagine such a figure. Imagine that it partially burns out in the atmosphere or is divided into smaller fragments. If an asteroid fragment the size of a one-story house crashes into Earth at the same speed... Shit, that's probably just as bad. It's probably going to make it worse then, isn't it? I mean, I don't know how you can get any worse than it would already be, but... If it's split in parts, then the chaos would probably just be... Just, yeah, it would be worse than how it could possibly already be. Its power will be approximately comparable to the bomb detonated in Hiroshima, about oh 20 goodness. kilotons. Such a collision Jesus. would raise every reinforced concrete building within a radius of 800 meters or 2,600 feet from the impact of the asteroid. Everything made of wood within a radius of 2.4 kilometers or one and a half miles would be destroyed. If the length of the fallen asteroid is comparable to a 20-story building and is a little over 60 meters or 200 feet wide, the impact power will be close to the explosions of modern nuclear bombs. That is approximately 25 to 50 kilotons. This is enough to incinerate every reinforced concrete structure within eight kilometers or five miles from the point of impact. Consequently, all living things on the site will also perish. In the event that 1997 XF-11 falls to Earth as a whole, the power of the explosion will be 50 million times the power of the bomb detonated. So I guess if it came back, if it hit Earth then together, it should be a lot more powerful. Which makes more sense. I knew it would be more powerful, but I just didn't know if, if, if it split up, it would just be split out and it would just damage so many different areas. It could cause just as much chaos, but I guess I might be wrong with that. But I mean, maybe I just miss it. Hiroshima. Everything within a radius of 160 oh. to 320 kilometers or 100 to 200 miles will turn to ashes. If the epicenter were, for example, in New York City, then from Boston to Washington, D.C., there would not be a single tiny living life form remaining, with the exception of super resistant bacteria. The explosion will raise a huge amount of dust into the atmosphere, forming clouds that will block sunlight from the Earth's surface. Therefore, anyone who survives is likely to die from a sudden cold snap. If such an asteroid hits the ocean, it will create enormous waves, more than 30 meters or 100 feet tall, that will wash away everything on the nearest coast. This asteroid is only one of the few potentially dangerous objects that could destroy life on Earth. The largest and most dangerous is Ceres. In 2006, scientists changed its status from asteroid to dwarf planet. Ceres has a diameter of about 945 kilometers or 587 miles. Discovery Channel employees created an animation showing the effects of a collision between Earth and Ceres. According to their video, first, the shadow of the impending object would block a fairly large area of Earth from sunlight. When it reached the atmosphere, the asteroid would begin to burn. Then, Ceres would penetrate deep into the planet, creating enormous tsunamis. The force of the collision would be so powerful that fragments of our planet would fly straight into space but they would not remain there for long. The resulting stone fragments would rain down on every area of our planet. The Himalayan mountains, including the peak of Everest, would be completely burned and turned into a plain. It's unlikely that anyone would be able to survive on Earth after such an impact. Fortunately, in the near future, a clash with Ceres is unlikely. However, this hypothetical experiment so is Ceres an asteroid so big it's now be, it's now been considered a dwarf planet. Is that just kind of what you just said? That's wild, man. It's that big. It's literally a dwarf. Planet. Oh. <laughs> what? 
What the hell? Biggest. I gotta see this. Biggest asteroid then. So, of what we know, Ceres is the biggest asteroid we know of. I mean, Jesus, that's wild. There's pro there probably are. I mean, I don't, I don't know if actually would, if it would be possible, but there probably are asteroids somewhere in the universe that are bigger than Earth, which is absolutely ridiculous to think about. Shows how fragile and vulnerable life on Earth is. According to scientists from NASA, to destroy all life on the planet, a 10 kilometer or 6.2 mile asteroid is enough. That is almost 95 times smaller than Ceres. Since a collision with a large asteroid will happen sooner or later, researchers regularly search for ways to avoid such a catastrophe. The best way to do this is to change the trajectory of an asteroid or destroy it in space before it reaches us. For these purposes, NASA, together with SpaceX, plan to launch the DART spacecraft. Its mission is to collide with the moon of the Didymos asteroid, which in October 2022 will be several million kilometers from Earth. DART weighs 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds and measures 12 and a half meters by 2.4 meters or 41 by 8 feet. The diameter of its moon is about 150 meters or 500 feet. Scientists calculate that the spacecraft and the block of stone will collide at a speed of six kilometers or 3.7 miles per second. This will allow them to determine whether a small collision can affect the orbit. Bro, imagine this collision ends up going so wrong, it ends up putting it in the direction of Earth. Oh man, that is a wild ass thought. I mean, I'd assume it wouldn't because the technology that they have and stuff, but you can never be too sure, man. Bro, the scenes, if that happens, they literally direct it in like, towards us on accident, but... Because it's the first time thing, they don't know how exactly it's going to go. Oh, wow. Orbit of an asteroid. In any case, the main thing is that after this experiment, Didymos and its moon will not be heading towards Earth because their trajectories are currently not in line with our planet. In truth, for each of us, the chances of dying from an asteroid are pretty small. They're even smaller than the probability of getting struck by lightning, amounting to only 1 in 280,000. But these statistics apply to the individual. If we talk about the planet as a whole, then the hazard coefficient increases. Yeah. Asteroid 2010 RF-12 has the highest chance of colliding with Earth, 1 in 16. It could come within 8.7 thousand to 15 thousand kilometers or 5,400 to 9,300 miles from the Earth. And in 2095, it could even crash into our planet. Fortunately, it's not large enough to lead to global cataclysms. However, there are still many other giant boulders in space flying past Earth at a dangerously close proximity. In your opinion, will technology be able to fully protect us from collisions in the future? Let us know in the comments. I mean, if you technology is crazy. Like this video. Technology is crazy, so you can't ever like be 100%, but I mean, I don't know, man. We're so, it's so new, like, we're so new to this kind of stuff. The technology is so new and all this kind of things, like, you can never be too sure that we'd be able to stop. And I don't think we would be able to. I mean, I saw a video of recently, like, two weeks ago from Veritasium and yeah that pretty much confirmed in my mind that we'd be screwed no matter what so I mean yeah that's my sort of thoughts on that good old Jupiter puts a lot of asteroids away for, from us all the time with its gravity you know and shout out Jupiter I mean probably the reason we're all still here today good thing I'll be old anyways when, I'm, when 2010 RF12 hits this channel taught me more than my 14 years of school props to the cameraman for going outside outside of reality to record this one. <laughs> Meet your higher uh, social distancing part. Just wanted to know the largest asteroid in existence. I didn't want to be terrified for the next eight years. <laughs> God damn. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, these videos are always really like... They, yeah, like I said, it's the same word I use all the time. I always just say interesting, but intriguing just you learn a lot and you find out things that you didn't know before and that's just why i like these these sorts of channels and specifically this one i've been getting into it a lot more recently and yeah man, i'm enjoying the videos but yeah if you want more reactions again from this channel or just videos like this just anything suggest it in the comments be more likely to do so 
if I see the suggestions and they have more likes. And I mean, yeah, that's just how it is really, but hopefully join until next time. Like, subscribe. Peace.